upload on this computer. Okay. So we're just gonna proceed on. Maybe some people will come late and maybe some people are requesting the recording. So this is nice. We got uh, four, we got, you know, three, three people interested and four of us are, um, you know, booking pals or, oh wait, oh, Pamela's here, good. Mm -hmm. um, all right, so let me start, give my little spiel. Hi, Pamela, how are you? <laughs> um, so I'm Liz Januzzi. I'm Book Inc.'s uh, program manager. Um, I always like to start by explaining the difference between, you know, uh, you might hear project right now thrown around and Book Inc. thrown around and may not know the relationship between the two. So I always like to start there, that project right now is our umbrella organization. Um, it's a nonprofit writing organization that started nine years ago this month. Um, and its mission is to transform lives through writing. So um, it has a lot of outreach programs it brings into the communities. You know, it brings creative writing programs into schools, uh, into, you know, senior housing, into, you know, um, organizations for um, adults with disabilities, all sorts of outreach programs, um, you know, basically just to you know, bring writing to everybody. We want everybody has a story to tell and we want everybody to be able to tell the story in their way. Um, so um, the, the community outreach programs are funded by donations and through our fee-based writing program. So we have, you know, six week writing classes or workshops and also Book Inc., you know, any of the tuition that we get from these programs helps support the community outreach, which I think is cool, you know. So, so Book Inc. is our Book Inc you know, is our book writing community that developed, um, you know, a couple of years ago in 2020. And it, and it started out of the need of our writers. We're looking for uh, to write full length uh, manuscripts. So um, these writers got together and they started this book ink, you know, um, arm of project right now. And, um, you know, it's really, it's really developed into something cool. I'll, you know, explain more about like the programs that keep developing as a result of the needs of our participants. But um, I don't know if anyone remembers this reference of uh, there used to be a commercial, like I'm not only the hair club president, but I'm also a client. So I'd like to say I'm not only bookings program manager, I'm also a writer. And, you know, here's my manuscript complete with little, you know, feedback tabs in there. Um, I participated in the memoir incubator in 2022. Um, and, you know, I'd been, I've been with Project Right Now for eight years, taking writing classes. I never was able to um, pull together a full length manuscript. So I really needed this program to do that. You know, and it, I, it was such a huge accomplishment. I'm not sure where, what will happen, but just even having, you know, 70,000 words down, um, it was well, an amazing feeling. Um, so that's, you know, that beginning part. We have lots of pals in attendance. Yeah, I can give a, a brief introduction for them. My um, Shonda McManus was my co-pal for the Memoir Incubator. She's one of the founding members. So she was here in the beginning. Um, and uh, she's currently, she was a co-pal for Book Revision Lab and she's currently doing Book Submission Lab. Um, we have Michelle, who I never can pronounce your last name, so I call you Michelle Prez. <laughs> Preston Inzi, I know. Preston it's brutal. <laughs> <laughs> um, she's been a co-pal for our book revision lab, a young adult genre. Um, and you're in book submission lab now, right, Michelle? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so that's cool. Uh, we have Tina here. She is our um, co-pal for the Memoir Incubator currently, so she can explain about that. And we have uh, Jennifer Carson, and she's our pal for the Book Submission Lab, um, which is the, you know, next step after you, you know, revise your book and you submit it to agents. Um, so let me just give a brief overview about our programs, and we'll have our pals give, like, the specific details. Um, so the memoir and, incubate, memoir and novel incubators are year-long programs. You start from the initial story idea uh, and you and write, go through, you know, drafting, um, doing your word counts, getting your manuscript up, you know, up until manuscript completion. Uh, we also have a reading round portion of that where you get feedback and revise. So the goal of that program is to have go from, you know, story idea to full length manuscript. Um, from there, uh, we have the Book Revision Lab, which is a six-month program, you know, focused on revision, uh, of course. Um, 
and that, you know, you get fresh readers, you get fresh feedback on your manuscript, and you get revision um, tips and techniques uh, and to really support you on your revision process. And then we have the book submission lab, a five month program specifically for writers to submit their memoirs or novels for publication. Um, what's great about our programs is that, you know, like, like I said, it, it started off of the incubator, then we developed the revision lab, and then we developed the book submission lab. We like, we keep meeting the needs of our writers and we're never gonna just like an MFA. First of all, we cost a lot less than an MFA, but we're not gonna just like, okay, graduation, you're on your own, go, you know, do what you gotta do. Like we're here to support you um, along the whole process, you know? So from the drafting revision, you can, you can revise again, you can take that revision program again if you need it to submission. You know, there's no cutoff date. We always want you to be part of our community. Um, so that's sort of, you know, the, the mission and purpose of Book Inc., you know, really to support writers. Um, offer, you know, we believe that writers don't need critique as much as they just need support and encouragement. You know, we are each other's cheerleaders. Um, you know, we, we believe in getting fresh reader feedback, you know, when, when it's appropriate, when you're ready to share your work, uh, that getting feedback from your writers, you know, helps to, you know, where we say, you know, show where the strengths, strengths are, you know, we think that um, helps facilitate writing. Um, and we're also here to like uh, support each, provide a platform for each other. You know, um, we're, like I said, each other's cheerleaders. And it, when it comes time to say you get, a, you know, a publication, you, get, you know, an essay published, like we're all going to be the ones who, you know, share it and comment on it, and like it. Um, and if you, you know, get to the point where you get a publication, you know, your book and community is going to be the people who show up to your, you know, your readings and or we're just here to support each other. And, um, you know, you need this community of writers to do that. So like even this, um, we have one of our writers is, uh, has a book coming out October 24th and we created this like virtual book launch party that we're all excited to attend and support her, you know, and that's the type of thing that we're here for you, you know. Um, so that's a little bit, a big overview of the program. We thought Shonda could talk a little bit about, since she's the co-founder, um, like what would be like the candidates for our program, what ideal writer? Yeah, thanks, Liz. I guess just to take up um, what you were saying, we are a very responsive community. So when I signed up for the, I signed up for the novel incubator in January, 2020, and I signed up because I had been a casual writer. Like I had been taking once a week classes um, at Project Right Now, never written anything more than 2000 words. Um, and I said, and I tried NaNoWriMo and wrote a total of, of 2000 words and that's it. I was well short of the 50. So I just, when I heard, when I saw this advertised, I said, I'm going to join because in my mind, I was like, I want to write a memoir, but I'm going to practice doing a novel and this, this group will help me and I'll, I'll do a practice book. And then when I'm ready to write my memoir, then I'll be, you know, I'll have the chops. So uh, what happened was the pandemic happened wow. in March. And um, just an aside, I, I'm a physician, so I was working the front lines. And then I was like, if I don't write this memoir right now, I might not ever be able to write it. So, you know, it was a group of about um, nine of us through the year, and they were very supportive. We held each other accountable. We had weekly word counts. We just, you know, we communicate on a Slack channel. Um, and so that was like my lifeline, you know, like I would go to work and it was just all this craziness and home with the kids. But then I had this little carve out of a, a book world and a book community. And that really just for me personally, I feel like that turned me into a writer, you know, because it, it made me write, it made me commit. And, you know, now it's 2023 and I've drafted three works and I couldn't have done it without the continual support of Book Inc. And so these other things like the revision lab, the submission lab grew out of that initial groups, what we needed. And so when you join Book Inc, you just, you have to think of it as a responsive community. 
you know, if something comes up in our community, hey, people really need to know how to line edit, then we're very open to creating a class, a form for you to learn how to do that. So I think that that's just something that I think is unique and I haven't really come across that in the writing world as much. Um, so I'm really just like happy to be a part of that. And as far as like, is this, are these programs a good fit for you? Book Inc. works on really two things, community and commitment, right? So the, the community, I think, is really what is foundational. We're a community. We support each other. That means we participate. That means when we get other people's work and we're supposed to give feedback, we give it. <laughs> you know, we, 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 we attend the, the, the meetings. We contribute. We're, we're good partners for each other. And I think that that's number one. And number two is the commitment. Um, of course, life happens, right? But if you know next year you're moving to a new state, starting a new job, that might not be the best year to start an incubator, you know, and different things like that. Now, that being said, through the, the, the over the past three years, we've had people suffer personal loss, tragedy, move, get dogs, any, any kind of thing that can drop a bomb in your life. We've had it happen to our writers. And, and I have to say, we had girls, we had two babies, you know, <laughs> but they, most of those people, they got their books done. And I think the community support um, was really like fundamental to that. So really those are the two things. So um, we like people to have some prior writing experience, um, have been a part of writing classes, whether in your community or through something more formal, um, kind of be open to learning and open to being a part of the community. Some people, you know yourself, if you've never been a community person and you, you know, you just talk to us more about exactly what that is, you know, to see if that might fit, you know, um, and um, be able to commit 12 to 14 hours a week if you're doing an incubator to your book and really be honest about, about the time, you know, and, um, you know, write it down, like exactly when are you going to write? Are you going to be a Saturday, Sunday writer? You're going to do that? That's fine. Are you a night writer, Monday through Thursday? You you write for two hours, two to three hours in the evening? Fine. But just really, you know, do a personal inventory of your, your time and your obligations and your responsibility. And if you think you can find those 10 to 14 hours, then this may be, be the thing for you, you know? Um, and be willing to learn a little bit of technology. We are all on Zoom here, so you guys have that part down. But Slack is the way we do communicate. Like when you're in the incubator, like I led the incubator, the memoir incubator that Liz was a part of. And every morning I would say, hey, today is July 1st, you know, and a little tidbit, you know, word count for this week is due, you know, now we're up to 15,000 words you know, just a little bit. And then people would share, we share resources, we share encouragement, we share struggles. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, I'll have to say Slack is, is for me a great way to really make me accountable and make me feel part of the community. And, you know, I love how we share articles and, you know, or triumphs or, you know, or, oh, I didn't get to any work that's done today, but, you know, it's okay when you share it with somebody else, you know, that, you know, you get on the next day and say, oh, I got something done. And it's just a great way to feel part of a community. I, I really enjoy it. Um, so uh, Jennifer Carson has to leave us a little bit early. So typically we would start talking about the incubators because that's like our first program, but um, because she has to leave early, we'll start with talking about the book submission lab. Let you... Thanks, Liz. Yeah. Thank you for going out of order. So the book submission lab is the is the the last stop in the pipeline, as it were. Although, as Liz mentioned, and I I'm pretty new to this community. This is book submission lab was the first thing that I um, my first involvement with projects right now, and um, and I can really see already what a wonderfully strong and supportive community it is. And when Liz said that about like as long as you're working on a book. Right, so hopefully Book Submission Lab takes you through your first publication and then you're back to the incubator for your second, et cetera. 
Um, I think the most efficient way for me to describe it is just to show a couple of slides. Liz, is, is, am I going to be able to? Yes. Let me give you hosting okay, capability. Thanks. I'm so glad you have slides because I don't have any. Well, I just, <laughs> I'm going to show you guys the slides I showed everybody in the first, on the first class of the book Submission Lab that just goes over the structure. Otherwise, I'll just ramble and you'll wonder later what I said. Okay, here we go. So first of all, the goals. Um, so the, oh, I did a fancy animation. F four or five month course that provides all the direction and support that you need to create a submission package by which we mean a query letter in the first 10 pages. That's, that's usually what an agent asks for. Um, and a book synopsis, if needed, that one is optional, but, but some people need that and some people don't. Um, and, and this is intended for writers who are at the point where they at least believe when they come into the class that they want to query agents. Or if you're far enough along and it kind of works for your schedule and you want to just at least back the information for when you are ready to look for agents. And you'll also develop a submission plan that is, that is the, the kind of outline of who you're going to query, how many, and when. And the, the format includes all these different components. There's a, there's a kind of a more lectury training component where I teach you uh, some suggestions for, for writing a query letter, lab, hands-on lab time where we do peer reviews and, and roll up our sleeves and do some writing. Um, there's guest appearances by, by writers who can just talk about their own experiences. And then of course, what every project right now um, course includes, which is your own ideas and involvement. Okay, so here's the structure. We start with a six week intensive, um, six weekly sessions. This is the intensive learning and compiling the submission plan. So by the end of it was, it was we just did the first run through um, and that was um, started in July and went through August. By the end of that, you have that query letter first 10 and the submission plan. So that's the intensive part. And that's where what Donda was saying about 12 to 14 hours, it's not as intense as if you're not writing, right? If you're just doing the sub submission lab, but this is the most time consuming part of the submission lab. And then part two is, act, is a one-on-one -on -one review. So I um, evaluate, I do like a detailed line edit of everybody's submission package, which is their um, query letter and some 10 pages. It can be a synopsis plus or for most people, it's just the 10 opening pages. And then we do a 30 minute one-on-one -on -one Zoom consultation to just bounce around, make sure everything that I said was clear and to bounce around any ideas that you have that you want feedback on. Um, and then I try to respond within, within two weeks. And then part three is the execution of the submission plan. We go to a monthly format and, and we have check-ins during that time. We just did, just so you know, we just did the first monthly checked in um, a couple weeks ago. And we actually, we also focus on special topics, like the monthly check-ins are a time for us to, to attend to address anything that didn't get covered in part one. Um, and a lot of people wanted some practice with speed dating, right? With the one-on-one -on -one in person or via Zoom. So sort of in person meetings with agents where they have to pitch their book to a, to a live individual. So we did that for the September meeting and we'll do check-ins, we'll have more um, guests, that sort of thing. So those are the three parts of the um, program. And then I'll just put these out. This is what we did week by week in part one. So there was a lecture on how to write a query letter and then we did a whole up here workshop on it. And then we did a workshop on the first 10 pages. We talked about all the aspects of publishing and submission, like just where do you find agents? what is publishing like, you know, that kind of thing. And then we do another sort of roll up your sleeves, get organized with your submission plan. And then um, week six was everything we didn't cover in the first five. So that was a brief overview. I hope that was helpful. Um, and I'm happy to answer any questions. Yeah, that I'm excited. That's a whole new world to me. So I plan to join in 2024. So I'm excited to dive into that. Michelle, you're taking that now. Do you want to give a little bit about your experience as a writer in the program? Um, sure. Well, Kami, so 
I just came out of the book revision lab where, so not only was I a pal there, but when you are a pal in there, everyone is sharing their stories. So one of, obviously my book was critiqued as well. So I think it's, it's been really fun to do it. I have to say it keeps you organized and focused on the goal because even though you may have your book ready, you may have your revisions done, you're like starting to start to look at your agents, you're getting organized, but the fact that you have deadlines every week, you're talking about it, you're in the mindset of like, you have a book and it's ready to go out. And whether or not your book is 100% ready to go back isn't really, um, doesn't really matter. It's really more the folks of it's going to be ready to go out. And here's all the steps you need to do to take it to the next step. And here's an organized path to get there. And you're in a, and when you meet, everyone is in the same exact place as you. We're all in this mindset. So it's very, it's communal, but it's also keeps you accountable and it keeps you focused and organized is the big thing. We are, we share organizational techniques, which I found really helpful. Um, it's really, it's great to have the one-on-one -on -one with Jennifer. You can bounce ideas. You can, you know, you get your query letter looked at multiple times, your pages looked at. So I think it just gives you a level of confidence before you go out, like knowing that these have been looked at. So you just kind of enter the whole process because it's a, it's, there's highs and lows to going on submission, you know, whether you've done it before or you're about to do it. So you kind of go in there with just more preparation and also a community of writers who are in it with you. So you can share your, you know, all of your successes and, you know, highs and lows together. So I'm, I'm very happy that I did it. And I would recommend it because I feel like it's just, I've learned from it and there's a lot of good takeaways from it, you know, so and I feel I'm very happy that I took it. I'm, I'm in it. Does anyone have any okay. specific questions about the book submission lab before Jennifer has to leave? No. no. Okay. I just would like oh. to say one more thing about this. Mm -hmm. When you Sounded, get yeah, to the... it too. When you get to this submission part of your book, it's a it's a really hard progress a process. There's a lot to know. There's information. You know, usually the answer is no. When you so having a community to support you um, because it's emotional, and you know you kind of need people. You need a team of people who can support you and kind of. You know, a lot of times, you know, the process can be so intimidating that you might not even write the query letter or make the list of agents because you just kind of have this, this big fearful thing. And so one thing this class does is kind of dissipate that with information, with community and with support and also accountability because you have to turn in that query letter <laughs> and those pages. So you have to do them. So, so um, again, I think this, this class is a great example of like kind of the way Book Inc. works across all the things, you know, that kind of outside and support at the same time. I know it's nice when you like submit your query letter, then you go into a pod with two other people and they help you make it better. Like it's so you're like, so people are so afraid to do it. And then they throw out their first draft. No one's like, oh yeah, and you can do this and this. And all of a sudden like, oh my gosh, I have a query letter and it's it's better than I thought it was going to be. And then it gets better and better. So, you know, it really does, you know, to your point, Sean, it takes away a lot of the uh, anxiety around it for a lot of people. It's, it's, a lot of people have that around it. So Yeah, well, it is. Yeah, I have anxiety. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> yeah. We have one, one, I think he's a booking board member who's, who's, it, it was his brainchild to his and mine sort of to have this submission lab. And I found out when he first joined the class that he's been submitting about one query a year <laughs> for like the last five to 10. And I was like, you know, this is just, that's just, and a lot of us get into that, right? It's like, you're simultaneously saying that you need to do it and totally holding yourself back. And it's harder to do that. It's it's much easier to sort of let go into that when you have a when you have a support. Because yes, this is the rejection part. The submission part is the is the no longer snaps all around. Mostly people are just gonna say no thank you. So Okay. Thank you. I wanna say can I say one last thing about the schedule? Yes. We have designed it so that we're offering it when it's best to be querying. So um so we're gonna we're intending to offer it in January and August because by the fall then you're submitting and then by you know winter you're submitting um, because there really are good good and bad 
seasons to query. So when you're thinking about it, if it doesn't quite work for your schedule, remember that that's what we're trying to do from here on just because of when agents work and publishers. Yeah, that was one thing I learned from you just recently. I had no idea, you know, that there were certain a, a calendar that you're supposed to be following for that. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Um, Thank so you. next we'll go into the, the memoir novel Incubators. Um, and currently we have Tina leading our memoir incubator. And then did I, I meant to give a whole spiel about pals. And I don't think I'm, I mentioned that was in my notes, but so we call everybody PALS, which stands for Peer Artist Leader. And the point of that is um, in Book Inc., you know, we don't believe that an instructor is like, you know, a guru who's going to give you the special sauce recipe that's going to make you have, you know, the best selling book. You know, we, we're all in this together. We believe, you know, that, um, you know, we just all need support and encouragement. And that's why we don't call, you know, the people who facilitate these programs or lead them uh, instructors. We call them PALs, peer artist leaders. So anyway, then here's Tina, who's the PAL for the Memoir Incubator. <laughs> um, well, welcome everyone. Um, and uh, I'm, I'm trying to think of how to, how to sort of sum it up, but basically, the goal of um, Memoir Incubator is to produce an actual um, memoir, which Liz showed you, a manuscript of at least 50,000 words in the neighborhood thereof. And I can say that I wanted to write a memoir for like, oh, I don't know, 20 years. And um, and finally, I did. Um, it's, it's in some sort of form right now. Um, and so what we do is we start in January and if you, you might come with a really solid idea or you might come with some vague ideas. And so we spend the first couple of weeks really trying to, we do a lot of journal writing, prompt writing, um, on our own, try to try to get at the root of what it is we really want to write about. And then we start drafting. And that's about 18 plus weeks, probably a little bit more. We aim for 500 words a day or 2,500 words a week, whatever, however that works for you. As Shonda said, sometimes you might, you might be a, a binge writer on the weekends, um, but tried every day. And, um, you know, that is always challenging. And we use Slack to, to keep each other honest and um, be accountable to one another. And that was really helpful too, because that's the reason I wrote because I knew I'd have to, I'd have to say if I wrote or not. So it really, it really helped to share that with, with the group. And then we, um, once the drafting is done, which we've just come to that point this year, um, sort of at the end of August, then we enter into a reading round and we share our manuscript, we break into pods into smaller groups and we we share, we mail physical manuscripts. And, um, you know, that that's to me the most exciting part so far. And I, I see Diane here, maybe she, maybe excitement is not the word. Um, it depends on the day, right? Um, it's, it's kind of exciting and scary at the same time. Cause like, wow, I actually did this thing that I've been talking about for 20 years. And, um, and then um, after that, we um, well, we're we're after that we have a couple more meetings and we talk about next steps and make make a like a revision plan and hopefully people will go into the book revision lab. So that's the way it's set. We meet every two weeks from seven to nine p.m. Usually in our pajamas. At least that's me. <laughs> and and. Um, and you know, obviously, if there's a holiday or a holiday week, we 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 don't meet. Um, but again, we meet every day on Slack to try to uh, support each other. So that's like the meat and potatoes of it. It's one thing I think is important for people to understand going in is that your your facilitator, your pal, is is not the the sage on the stage, as Liz said. We we are just there to guide. We're writing along with you. So that is, some people don't grasp that, that, you know, we're not necessarily accomplished published writers. We are writing with you. So we're experiencing everything with you. We're just guiding the conversation and making sure that the group stays together and, and does what it needs to do to move forward. 
And the, the meetings, while we do talk about craft and we have little mini lessons and some writing um, experiences, that it's also not a, it's not a workshop. In other words, we're not constantly sharing each other's work and giving feedback because the philosophy is that we're going to, that you're not going to sort of give away your energy about your book. You're just going to write. The purpose is just to write and try not to judge or try not to edit every day, 500 words if you can. And so that's different for some people. You're not going to get feedback until September. So you're going to be writing essentially by the time you start drafting February to August with only one sharing opportunity. I think we shared 500 words, which was probably my favorite meeting of the whole year when we each got to share 500 words. Um, so that's also something that I think people should know that you're not, you're not going to get that continual feedback. You're going to get continual support, but not necessarily workshop feedback on your writing. Yeah. Did I leave anything out, fellow pals? I don't think so. Diane, do you want to talk about your experience being in it right now? How are you? Are you... So your manuscript I would agree. done? Yeah. Yeah, it's done. I would agree with everything that Chandra and Tina both said. Um, so I had been taking writing classes with Project Right Now for several years, and most of my background was in poetry. So like Chandra, I was only writing a few hundred words. Then I took a memoir class. So I increased my writing, but it was really different than poetry. And I had like one, maybe two sessions of a memoir class. And I'm like, I'm going to, I'm going to do this, but I had no idea what I was going to write about. So when I first jumped into the memoir in class, there's all kinds of journaling, memoir exercises, all of those things. And I, if you don't have a strong idea of what you want to write about, do those exercises. Because I had three different things that I wanted to write about. And you cannot write three books in one year, work full time, have a family, have life, and all these other things. You have to pick one. So after several weeks of journaling, I narrowed down one idea and i did that and you definitely you have to have a commitment of i'm going to write 500 words a day or you're gonna you have to have the, figure out that plan in the first few weeks of the class of how you're going to accomplish that because that's a commitment that you make to everyone in the class and that's a big commitment and you're going to make that commitment basically for a year. So there's breaks in there. So like, if you don't get your 500 words a day done, um, I don't have the, the schedule off the top of my head, but let's say week 10. Well, week 11 might be a makeup week. So you can look at the schedule and say, okay, I'm on vacation week nine, but I know I have week 10 and week 11 that I can play with. I can move the schedule around. Um, I'm really fortunate. I have a crazy work schedule, but I also have four weeks vacation. I took a week's vacation this year and did nothing but write like absolutely crazy so that I would be done but pretty much by mid-August because I know me, I'm a royal pain and that I was going to be horrible when it came to revisions. And I'm not one of those writers that writes sequentially. And I knew I was going to have this mess on my dining room table of where I was going to have to put all these chapters together because I don't write sequentially. I write chapter one, chapter 50, chapter 85 chapter three, whatever. And then you have to kind of figure out how you want it structured. Um, so you have to allow time for that. And it takes, it takes time to do that. And we talk about that in the class. 
But Tina's definitely right when she says, we don't workshop in class. And we get one time, and I agree with you, Tina, that was the best, was when we got to read the 500 words. So for me, I had very few, I'll call them sections or chapters that were 500 words. So I took one, probably three page chapter and cut out so much so that I could get it down to about 500 words. But that was my favorite part to hear what everybody else wrote. It was just great. I wish we had another session like that. But yeah, I remember that too. I remember that being a fun time because you're working with these people, but you don't know their stories. And when you finally get, you know, a glimpse into it, it's fun. But let's not let's, um, you know, move on a little bit. Unless anyone does anyone have any questions about the memoir or not? We've been talking about memoir, but. That was really interesting. I don't know if Novel Incubator does this, but I remember at the very beginning in something, I don't know if it was something I read or something that somebody said, where they said, don't talk about your book. And I really didn't tell anybody or very, very few people that I was writing a book this whole year. And I actually like, when we first started that we were going to do 50,000 words and I'm sure novel incubator is 50,000 words as well. You sit there and you say, Oh my God, how am I ever going to do this? You actually do it. Like by the time September comes, you have your 50,000 words. Yeah. It's yeah. amazing. It really it's is incredible. amazing. Wait, yeah. Did you see my mem? Okay. Yeah. If it, okay. it yeah. feels, it feels like magic and you know, it's pretty, we, we've been talking about the memoir incubator, but the novel incubator is structured pretty much the same. You know, we, you spend the initial trying to figure out what your story is, set it up. We use yeah. like a save the cat model just to give yep. some people some organization, but basically the two programs are pretty much mirrored. Um, except one is uh fiction and one is nonfiction. And one is not. You know? Yeah. And so, the other and- thing that I did just because everybody has to keep that 500 words and partway through, I was like, Every day, 500 words, 500 words. I wrote 450. I wrote 700 today. And after three or four weeks, you don't remember how many words you actually wrote. I started a spreadsheet because I was like, how many words do I have? And I have to account how many words. Like I started to drive myself crazy because then I was going back through all my daily numbers and starting to add them up. Okay, well, now I'm at 2,500 and now I'm at, you know, 5,000 or whatever. I just started a spreadsheet because I couldn't keep it in my head all the time of what I was doing. Yeah. Yeah. I remember I had to do that too, but let's move on because we were focusing a lot on that and, um, and we want to get to book um, revision lab. So yeah, after, you know, the incubator, you have a full length manuscript. Now what, you know, next comes revision. So um, Michelle, do you want to talk a little bit about book revision lab? Yeah, absolutely. So what I want to mention about all these programs, which is kind of interesting, is that you actually don't need to take all of them and you don't need to take them sequentially. You can independently write your novel and then pop into a book revision lab. You could not independently do all your revisions on your own and then enter into, into submission. So it depends on what your needs are. You can look at Project Now, Book Inc. and say, where do I best fit where I am with my manuscript? And really, the, the goal of the revision lab is simply to help you make your manuscript stronger. It's to help you revise. It's to talk about practical techniques, to explore different options, what works best for you. Um, It is designed to get fresh eyes on your story. And this actually grew out of um, prior to this revision lab, we did something called a fresh reader program where we had people reading beta readers to read each other's stories. And then we had this experience and then it was over. Uh, people read each other's stories, they commented, and then everyone often on their own way. And I was like, wait a minute, I want, I where'd everybody go? I want to like be with people while I'm revising. It's kind of like in a way to hold your hand because sometimes after you get all this wonderful feedback, you're full of ideas, but then actually to execute them, it's easy to flounder. It's easy to kind of get distracted. So Book Revision Lab grew out of this need from writers in Project Now to want to continue a program we, we could revise together. And uh, I'll just like quickly give you an overview of how it's laid out. 
the book revision lab is geared toward you can have a memoir you can have a novel you can have a young adult middle grade novel i personally uh, was in the young adult middle grade novel section so you have three different arms of that but it's all under the umbrella of book revision lab and collectively we'd meet as a group all writers together and then for smaller lessons we would break into our arms whether you're ya your memoir or um novel and because you have shared interests, you have a shared dialogue, and that's where you kind of break into the different groups. Those three groups break into pods where we could spend a couple of weeks talking about revision, how to give feedback. And uh, just so you know, the type of feedback that's given during Revision Lab is very much a reader experience. We spend a lot of time going over how to go about giving feedback. We have a certain revision um, questionnaire, like a summary to give your fellow writers once you read their books and then you swap manuscripts it's three people in a pod you swap stories and you have a reader experience so you're kind of commenting as you go is like how are you feeling about this as a reader of their story and you're pretty much just like sharing your experience it's very uh it's really all really positive based it's motivational to show you what's really working i love the word zinging so what zings in your story and that's what the uh, revision is all about and then you'll get a detailed questionnaire letter about themes about breakdown of different crap things and what's really working and what's really exciting about the story and you swap that and you have a dedicated hour uh where each person gets to like hear the two other pod mates talk about your story like you sit there and you listen to them chatting about your story and we have a format about what they'll discuss it's exciting and then you go in with all your questions and it's it's kind of a fascinating experience if you haven't had this experience yet because people are, your readers are pulling out themes and talking about stuff that you didn't even know was in there per se, or they're pulling out a theme. You're like, Oh, I didn't know I did that. Well, thank you very much for telling me that. So it's a, it's definitely a worthwhile experience. Once uh, everyone has their reading rounds, we regroup and we spend the second half of the, um, the second, I would say, three months of our program, it's a six months program, kind of like, okay, now what? You've got all this feedback, what do you do? And we try to, we, we dedicated lessons to like big picture craft items. And interestingly, like the different pals would teach the different lessons depending on what they really were interested in and also what the needs of the particular group were. So people were like, I really want to learn about setting. I really want to like talk deeply about backstory. I really want to focus on beginnings and endings. So we would dedicate time to each of these kind of bigger concepts and how they can help you with your revision process. And we also spent time uh, outlining and making revision goals and also plans for the future. Uh, just for as far as the specific layout, it was six months every two weeks. And to be honest with you, and Greg said, Michelle, you want to do this? I thought, oh my God, it's so long. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but um, I did, I was like, okay, I'll, I'll do it. It's long and it's, but I have to say like when it was over, I was sad because you wind up getting so connected with everyone in your group. And so used to seeing everyone on Thursday nights. And we do once again, participate with Slack that it becomes very communal and connected and you're connected to people's stories. Whether you've read everyone's stories, you know, the ideas of their stories. So all of a sudden when the six months is over, I was like, wow, that actually went faster than I thought. So that's the overview for it. So I, for this particular story, I, as a PAL member, obviously facilitated that, but I also shared my novel. I did not do Book Inc. with this novel, and I finished the novel like weeks before it was my turn to uh, swap my novel. So I will say it's highly motivating when you have deadlines, regardless if you're in, you know, the incubator, the revision, or the submission. If someone says that it's your turn to submit something next week, it makes you move. So... I know I spoke quickly. I just don't want to run out of time because we're, but that's it in the nutshell. I'm happy to ask, answer any questions if anyone wants more detail about the revision lab. Or if Shonda, you were in the revision lab, we've got people okay. in the revision lab. If anyone wants to jump in. Yeah, anything. I think it just keeps you, like you said, I think it keeps you very accountable, you know, and as a peer leader, you're in the thick of it with everyone. So you don't get a pass. So you're like finding time to get your manuscript together, just like everyone else. So I think that just really creates a bond and it really helps you get your work done. It just does, you yeah. know, it's like as writers, you know, we do this solitary thing and isolation, but we have this because of book, book ain't this community pull pulling you along. So it just, you know, makes you sit in the chair more because you have to, because your thing is due. <laughs> so. 
Yeah. Diane, you had, do you have a question about book revision lab? Yeah, so is the revision lab, it's on Thursday? Is it every Thursday or every other Thursday? Every other Thursday for six months. Okay, so it's yeah. opposite. Opposite the incubators, oh. yes. Okay, thank yeah, you. Yeah, we have it that way in case some people want to, you know, be in both. We do have it scheduled that way. Um, all right, so we did it all. Incubators, revision lab, submission lab. Um, any more questions? Oh, the, uh, the next steps, you know, um, we ask uh, everybody to apply for these programs. Not so much that we're like, you know, looking through your writing and critiquing it. Uh, we just want to see your commitment. You know, it is a, a program that you have to show up for um, and be committed to, you know, and your other writers are um, rely on you, you. So we feel the application is just a way, you know, to, to see your commitment to the program. So we ask everybody to apply um, and then we reach out to you after that. Um, I will, I'll be sending a, a follow-up email tomorrow to anyone who registered and I'll include the application link in the email. Um, so I think that's it. Yeah, I want to, I, if there's any questions, we can ask them. But so today, I, this is like, you're not going to believe this. You're going to think I'm making it up. But here's a quote from one of our writers on our Slack today. I mean, it's kind of crazy. It, um, this is someone who's been in my memoir incubator and in my book revision lab. Um, and she currently went away. She took herself on a retreat to Maine to work on her uh, manuscript. And this is what she wrote today on Slack. From the chair where I am sitting in a little studio cottage, I am looking out at a bright yellow late summer daisies and a sea of cattails with the Kennebec River in the distance. And I'm thankful for all the time I have this week to think about my book. And if I wasn't part of a group like this, doing something like this would only have been a dream for someday. I'm so glad the accountability and I'm so glad for the accountability and inspiration I get every day from all the writers here. Cheers to all of you for encouraging me and to believe a solo writing getaway was not a crazy idea. Anyway, just goes to show you this is our writers out doing it, you know, making it happen and, you know, grateful for the community and accountability that booking provides. That's my spiel. Does anybody yeah. have any questions? Paula, you've been quiet. Are you knitting over there? Yeah. <laughs> are you yeah, what program are I you am. interested in? The memoir incubator. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. And we're open. Yeah. And we're open for questions after after this. Um, so you know, if anything comes up or you have any particular specifics, but um yeah. So, so I wrote my first memoir in the novel incubator. <laughs> I was the only one. And then I was the peer artist leader for the memoir incubator. Um, and so I've kind of experienced, you know, all sides. <laughs> yeah. So one question I did have about the memoir incubator is if we're a little, like I, I have a lot written, but um, it's all is there something that's going to help us form our order of things? Yes, absolutely. We spend a lot of time in the beginning on structure oh, and great. the structure that we, that we kind of use or recommend is the save the cat, um, 15 beat narrative arc structure, you know, and we really spend a lot of time um, kind of go over, you know, going over those steps. And, you know, there's a lot of different ways to structure books, right? And there's a lot of different, but this is the one that we use. And we found it to be very effective to kind of plug in a lot of stories that way. And I will say that in, I found in particular for memoir, um, it's fundamental. Like most of the feedback on the, the first drafts talk about structure. So I, I think that that's a challenge for the memoir writer. And we really, um, we spent a lot of time just kind of doing that and going over it and, and really breaking it down, you know, because a lot of us know our stories, but we're not sure if it's, you know, does it rise and does it fall? And, you know, so we spent a lot of time talking about that and teasing that out. Excellent. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Anyone else have any questions? 
I'm lending out. All right. Well, yeah, okay. feel free to email us. We'll answer. And like I said, I'll send you a follow-up email tomorrow. And it's been a pleasure. Thank you, everyone. Yeah. Thanks for coming out, Thanks guys. Thanks for coming. Thank, Thank you. you. Appreciate it. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.